Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Leadnap Gaming. Today we're talking about hybrid fleets and courier fleets continuing our fleet management series. This entire series is designed to provide thought and guidance in forming your fleet for launch day. That said, it's highly unlikely you end up with a single professional fleet, though it is possible. The idea for this series is that you will be armed with the insight about different professions and their needs, have an ideal picture of what a dedicated fleet would be, and thus can piece together what your fleet should be. Last week, we talked about cargo fleets, and I had a lot of questions about the Carrick, for example. Yes, while it has less SCU than the Cat, the Carrick can be a good cargo carrier. It has a lot of ship, though, that isn't dedicated to cargo. Ships in similar size and SCU load that are cargo runners outclass it in just about every important category, which is why I didn't have it in my cargo fleet. That said, the Carrick offers a ton of value outside cargo running, especially where some other ships don't. If you're building a dedicated cargo hauling fleet and nothing else, follow the script. However, most, if not all of you, will be doing more than just one thing. If you're going to be an explorer and cargo runner, the Carrick is hands down the best money you can spend. Substitute it in, and don't bother with the Herks or the Cats, perhaps. You will find as this series progresses, some great ships never seem to make the cut. The Cutlass Black will probably come the closest to inclusion this week, but will generally never make the grade in a number of professions it would be fantastic in. I get that this feels contradictory, but we're talking about the considerations each profession has, and what ship features are most ideal for them. Some ships are purpose-built and will be the best picks if you're pursuing a professional line. Other ships from other lines may have these features baked into them, but for a number of reasons don't make the ideal grade to be included. The Endeavor could possibly be a great cargo ship. It's too early to say, but the cost of all the features you won't use cargo running are the reason it isn't mentioned in the cargo fleet video. Which is why I'm choosing to include this explanation in today's video about courier fleets. Courier missions are not really a profession. It's a beginning to cargo running, or a simple loop to run up some starting capital. Many of you might laugh it off or think otherwise about building a fleet around this, but there is a segment of Star Citizen players planning to crew other people's ships. A segment that doesn't aspire to sit in the captain's chair, nor own the big ships. For those of you, this video will be important because courier missions will offer you opportunity to make money on your own when not part of a crew. For the rest of us, this is a great way to put some risk-free cash in your wallet. And for the last group out there, if you wanted to buy a single ship and then do the rest in the verse, courier missions offer a great way to start that empire. Okay, but just about anything can do these, right? Yes, but as someone who's done a lot of them, I can tell you that some ships are far better than others. Courier missions, like everything else in Star Citizen, are very much a if-you-know-you-know you know sort of job. Blindly jump in, you're going to make almost no money for your efforts. You'll burn out on it, and you'll see a lot of frustration. That's actually true of all the professions, by the way. Today, we're really going to dig into what you should look for, considerations to have for picking up boxes and putting them down, usually in very different places. So what to look for? Up first, easy to land. A lot of package missions take place in desolate spots. You need something that can land in uneven and constricted terrain easily. If it fits, it ships. The closer you can land to the door, the better. So preferably something that can land inside a junkyard rather than outside of it. In and out. You're looking for a ship that doesn't take an hour to get in and out of. You're looking for something that's fast. The best missions you can't jump. And you're about to find out the difference between 1,000 and 1,200 meter a second SEM speed. Range. To make money as a courier, you have to go the distance. You'll need a QT drive that doesn't take all year to get there, but that doesn't burn fuel up a third of the way there either, or require three r, &R stops to gas up. Space. Ideally a cargo grid, but minimum an interior where you could place a box. Several boxes, preferably. Low key. Something that holds its own but doesn't attract attention. A view. This is one of those things you learn from experience. The best views from the pilot seat not only give you rewarding vistas on your trip, but make finding the damn place easier, and therefore way faster. Preferably not expensive. Look, if you were going to spend $500 on a ship, you probably wouldn't be thinking about courier missions and crewing someone else's ship. The same goes for fuel. The goal, after all, is to make a profit here. Good atmospheric flight. Going into 310, this is really starting to matter. 
you're going to the surface. Accept it. You'll need to be able to fly down there. So sounds easy, right? Something with a ton of fuel and cargo space, small enough to land somewhere, but with big windows. Easy to get in and out of. This is kind of beginning to contradict itself, right? The perfect courier ship doesn't exist. You'll have to make compromises along the way. The trick here is to understand what those compromises mean. Huh, that could be this whole series. Let's look at some of my picks that make the ideal courier. Again, you're really looking for just one ship here. There's no need to build a courier fleet. Up first is the Banu Defender. Now this is my current runner. It has great range, it's easy to get in and out of, ample floor space. The cons are, of course, that it is a little expensive, it does not have a cargo grid, and it's alien. Star Runner. Cargo, data, floor space. What else can you say? Well, the cons are, of course, that it isn't yet in the game, and it is a little on the expensive side. It's quite large, probably going to have a longer exit time, too. Up next is the Cutlass Black. Cargo space, range, easy out, a little longer to get back in, and it is cheap. The cons, of course, are the medium footprint, though it can do rough terrain really well. The view could be better, but it's not bad. It might fly somewhat like a brick, and the range could be better. The Cutty Black is an all-around great ship because it already compromises everywhere. But as a result, you do get all the features you're looking for. They just could be better. Up next are some good choices, like all of the vanguards. They have floor space, speed, and most importantly, range. Like the Cuddy, though, they have a pretty big footprint. They're not the worst to get in and out of, but it could be better. The upside here is you could secure the door and leave the ramp down, saving time, but the activation of that is so clunky that odds are you're going to spend more time trying to close the door than just closing the ramp. Never leave your ship open. The Avenger series, namely the Titan. If it were not for the short QT range, this would be an easy choice. The same goes for the 300 series. Of course, then also the Reliance series. Like the last two, if it had the range, this would be a quality runner. Though it's also far pickier about where you land it. It does win the visibility contest hands down, and it is very nice and fast. Some less obvious choices. The Argo Mole. Now, laugh if you want, but the Mole's only downsides here are a lack of cargo grid and the journey from the pilot seat to the ground. The Prowler. The one thing this ship could be good at is package running. But no cargo space makes this tough. On paper, it looks good for this, but I've repeatedly tried to make mine work, and it just it just doesn't work. The price tag also hurts, but if you did buy one of these, you can use it. The better choice then is the Valkyrie. The biggest cons to this ship is the longer exit time, its big footprint, and it's quite expensive. These are just nitpicking, not the expense part. It does have everything else you're looking for, and for me was a tried and true runner for a very long time. Unlike the Fragile Prowler, the Valk can be rocketed towards the surface at high speed. You can drop the VTOL engines to brake, but most importantly, you can handle a harder impact landing. Unlike the Prowler. On the Freelancers and Connies. First, the Freelancers. This sort of work is very much right in your sweet spot, but the visibility can and has been a serious issue if you have to find your target. As long as you run only box missions that involve HUD indications, this isn't so bad, though even then if there's bad weather, it's going to be a rougher landing. As for the Connie, it was built for this. Aside from speed and historically terrible in Atmo flying, it seems like a no-brainer. Especially fun because you can get away with a far smaller footprint to land in thanks to the way the landing gear is set up. And you can even drop the elevator down right at the base of the stairs for VIP service. That of course is also the problem. To operate the elevator, you have to look at the floor of the small platform you stand on, the exact place the commands for the box you're carrying are located. There's an art to this. You'll learn it fast, but it will be frustrating. Those issues aside, both of these are very strong picks. I keep talking about cargo grids, and by now you probably think I've lost it because you don't need a cargo grid to package run. Cue the actually meme. There are two reasons a cargo grid is something you want. First. CIG has previously said eventually unsecured cargo will move around in flight. Sometimes, currently, if you drop a box, it breaks, and it won't be accepted to complete the mission. Nothing tells you that. It's super frustrating when you go to deliver it and it won't accept the delivery and complete. Thus, you don't get paid. Now imagine cargo flying around your ship. Second, this is a huge profit potential you're missing out on. Package running is an awesome cargo generator. You might be at Terra Mills getting a package for Crew L5. And Crew L5 happens to give good coin for the distilled spirits from Terra Mills. The profit's going to be small, sure, but it's added profit for a run you're already making. 
This can also be a great way to ensure some profit when doing even more lucrative missions that require you to locate the destination. Load up for the trip out. These places always pay top dollar. At least now, if the server crashes before you deliver the box, you got paid to pick it up. Now, some unlikely yet best options for package missions. Again, we're aiming this towards those who probably don't own big ships nor have big fleets. The sorts of players who are starting out their fortunes or plan to crew other ships as crew and don't need to own big ones. That said, the following ships all share one thing in common. They notch every feature you're looking for and then some. These are, of course, large ships that carry parasites. The Carrick, Polaris, Kraken, 890 Jump, and sure, the Idris and Jav too, I suppose. They have the range, the fuel, the QT speed to go from one side of the verse to the other. Now you drop a Pisces in the hangar, and you have a ship to head down to the surface in that also has everything you now need. Why even mention this? Well, mostly because you might find someone who owns one who's up for an adventure. Something to do in the verse. Someone that will ferry you around for fun. These ships are, despite appearing jack-of-all-trades, very limited in function, and their captains are usually up for any opportunity to use their big special ship. So ask. The other reason, these are terrible of ships alone for this. The Carrick, for example, is very slow. It will take forever to orbit and dive on a non-jump pickup and drop-off point. I know, I've been trying. They excel only when using their parasite, but are otherwise, for various obvious reasons, incredibly poor choices. Speaking of poor choices, the Herx. Look, I love these. I think they're probably the best cargo ship out there. They have massive landing footprints and will not have a fast way down from the bridge. I'm not saying you can't, but at that point you're better off just running scrap for a few pennies a unit. The Caterpillar. Again, this would seem a no-brainer. It does take a while to get from the bridge down, but what you really suffer from is needing a good landing zone, and at least this time when you can't get back on the elevator, you won't be at a fully loaded cat. I've used mine. It can be done. The QT speed's really nice, but I assure you that you will probably have a better choice in your hangar. So again, why mention couriers at all? Aside from being thorough, knowing that you might run some boxes from time to time could change your thinking on one or two smaller ships in your hybridized fleet. I also want to prompt you guys to start thinking differently about your ship choices. Really start having that mental Venn diagram when thinking about some of the potential choices in more obscure ships. Especially when it comes to some of the professions we're about to get into, like exploration, where you might need to have some tough choices that give you extra money making power to support your professional adventures. To recap then, we talked about building dedicated fleets versus the more likely hybrid fleet you'll need to consider the different aspects of. We talked about features you'll want if running box missions for money that have been learned over hundreds of such missions, ships that are great and not so great, as well as a tool for improving your QT speed. Down in the comments, I have two questions for you guys. First, to the owners of those large parasite ships, if asked, would you ferry someone around right now? Second, what kind of fleets are you guys most interested to look at? As always, like and share this video, subscribe if you haven't, and I will catch you all next time.